Hey everybody, Tracking Pat here with a really exciting new feature that we've developed for the RMX Control. It's something we call Clear Off, and to give you a little bit of an idea of what we're talking about, I'm going to show you this sample of the ballpark. Now we've all seen this part a lot of different times, right? But the difference here is that we've got this event now where I can remove the material from the outside in, leaving a boss or a profile of whatever I need. And some of the cool things about this is I can use different tool paths to remove the material, as well as I can have multiple bosses or profiles, and I'm going to show you that in a minute. Now, because we've used this product and this part so many different times, we're going to use some different ways of showing you the, the ability and the capability of how this thing works. So to get us started, I'm going to start out with a simple sample. And you'll notice in here, if I go in the control and I just simply swipe forward, that I've got a part in here that's got a circular boss and a square boss and then an outside shape, which is also square in this case. And I'm going to show you how to program this from scratch. So the first thing I'm going to do is go to the edit mode and just erase my program. Program, okay, so here's how it works when you're programming manually. When I go to the program mode, it's going to ask me for a part name, which I'm going to skip for now, but normally you can put that in. When I swipe forward, you will notice here that when I go to the second page under more, you'll see there's a new button here that says clear off. When I select clear off, the first thing it asks me is the shape of one of my profiles. So you'll notice I got the same options as I do with pockets. I've got circles, I got rectangles, and I got irregular shapes. Keeping this fairly simple, I'm just going to select a circle. I'm going to say that my first circle is at an inch and a half in X, inch and a half in Y. It's a one inch radius. And you'll notice here that it's asking for my tool offset. You'll also notice in this green box that it's saying whatever I select for my tool offset on this first profile is going to be applied to every profile thereafter. I'm just going to hit the set key and accept that. And now it's asking me, what do you want to have for another profile? I'm going to select rectangle. I'm going to tell it that this corner of the first is three and three, and the other side is five and five. And I've got a one eighth radius on the corners. And you'll see right there that there's my rectangular profile. I could continue to keep adding profiles, but in this case, I'm going to push the end profiles button. And now it's asking me to select or define the stock. So here's a really cool thing. The stock can be circular, it can be rectangular, it can be square, or it can be odd shaped, which is something that we didn't used to be able to do in the past. So I think it's important to point that out. But what I'm going to do is just a rectangular stock. My lower left hand corner right here is zero, zero, right? So I'm going to put zero, zero there. This is a six by six inch block. And my Z-Rapid is already in my defaults. I'm going to cut this a half an inch deep. I don't need a Conrad because there is nothing on the outside of the part. My direction is at set it counterclockwise. I'm going to leave that there. I'm going to do this in just one pass. Use a 10 thousandths finish cut. And then I'm going to put in my feeds and speeds. Okay, I'm going to tell it to come in at 30 inches a minute. Machine at 60, finish at 40. And now I've met my tool information. Before I go any farther, I want to explain a couple of things. If I open my options page here, you're going to notice that I have my tool path set to parallel. I can change this for any different thing. And so you see how this all works. I'm going to use the different tool paths for each one of these samples. But I just wanted you to see right now where it's set. Another thing I want to point out is my entry method doesn't really matter because it's only going to bring the tool down where there is no material. So it's going to default to plunge anyway. I'm going to close that right there and I'm going to just use tool number one for both the rough and the finished part of this. And so there's my completed part. Now you notice it looks a little bit different because this time I've got solid blue lines showing my profiles and dotted blue lines showing the actual material and where it's going to start to remove. So when I go to the tool table in here, I'm just going to look for a tool that I can use to remove the material. I'm going to call that tool number one, close the tool table and go to the setup mode and select tool path. Once it calculates the tool path, you're going to see that using the parallel design, it's going to remove all of the material until everything is gone. Okay. Now to give you a little bit clearer uh, identification of this, I'm going to go to verify part. I'm going to define my stock. Remember that corner is zero, zero. The part's actually an inch thick. The other side is six and six. And the top of the part is Z zero, right? So I hit return, go to make part. And I'm just going to go this way so you can see it a little better. And then hit verify part. Happens pretty quickly, but as you can tell, it starts from the outside, removes all the material, and leaves your profile standing. So super in the way that it works manually. Okay. 
Now the next thing I'm going to do is show you how this works from a DXF format. Okay, so I'm going to go back here into program in and out. I'm going to select this part here that says EPA part DXF. Just like any other DXF program, I'm going to go into here, swipe forward, I'll see my DXF. In this case, this is kind of hard for the camera to pick up, so I'm going to change the background color so that I can see it a little bit better. It actually helps me a lot too, standing off here on the corner. And now what I'm going to do is just push continue. In here, I got my normal question of what is my gap tolerance. I'm just going to leave that at five thousandths and push yes. And then uh, before I move any farther, I want to explain something. Because I'm working on the machine with the touch screen, I don't need a mouse. But if I was doing this in my offline programming or something where I don't have a touch screen, I can use a mouse. In this particular case, I'm going to use the mouse for some of this also because it'll help keep my fingers out of the way. All right. So you'll see here if I move my mouse around that I do have it working here, right? Okay. So what I'm going to do here with this DXF is I'm just going to push continue and I'm going to use this lower left hand corner for zero. So I'm going to select B, just touch that corner. Whoops, missed right there. Okay. Hit continue. And I don't need to add any lines or hide any parts of this thing. But what I've actually got here, if I, uh, if I go in here and I hide this, you'll notice that this part here is going to be standing as well as those three profiles. So it can do closed profiles as well as open profiles. And what I want to do before I move any farther is I want to click on this button that says inquire geometry. And I need to know a couple of things. I need to know the size of that inside radius so that I know what size tool I can fit in there, right? The other thing I need to know is the overall size of the block because this is a DXF and you'll notice if I look in here, this block is also six by six. Okay, so now that I've got that and I know that I'm going to hit continue and in here in the DXF, I have the same DXF features as well as clear off. So I select clear off, says do I want to chain? Yes, I do. And I'm going to start out with this piece right here. Now it's a little bit easier to stay out of the way if I use the mouse to grab that part and you'll see that it chains it all together. And then up here at the top, you'll also see that it says done chaining. So I'm going to go up there and hit done chaining. And now it says, what other profiles do you want to do? Now, if you remember when I was doing it manually, I had a select tool left. Well, what I did here is by going through this in that direction, I've already selected tool left. So now I'm just going to take my other profiles and do them in a tool left pattern as well. So that one, like so and so, and last but not least is circle. And the last thing I'm going to do is up here, I'm going to push the button that says end profiles. So I go to end profiles, it says select the geometry of the outside. Do I want to chain? Yes, I do. I'm just going to start up here with this piece, go this direction. You'll see that it connected these three pieces together, but left this standing because I'm not going to machine over there. All right. So now that I've got that correct, I'm going to go up here to event. And just like before, I'm going to come down here, start filling in my information. So minus 0.5. One pass, 10 thousandths finish cut, put in my RPMs, my feed rates. Now before I go any farther, I told you I was going to show you some different tool paths. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to go over here to my options page and I'm going to change this parallel tool path to an offset tool path and close that window. The other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use two tools so I can do that just like I do in a pocket. So I'm going to use tool number one here tool number two there. And with the rest passes, I'm going to leave that set to two. So I've got my programming part done here. I've got to go to my tool table and I'm going to look for a tool to do this work. So I'm going to use that five ace tool for tool number one. And I'm going to use this quarter inch tool to make sure it fits in that small radius and use that at tool number two. Okay. Whoops. Did I miss there? It looks like I missed. Sometimes standing off to the side gets you a little bit there, right? Okay, so I've got my tools correct in here. I close the tool, pay, tool table. I go to setup mode. I go to tool path. Let it calculate. And there you go. So now you can see that I've got an offset tool path that's going to remove everything and leave my profiles as well as this standing. All right. Remember, the more complicated the tool path, it always takes a few more seconds in order for it to actually calculate it. I'm going to push return here and go to verify part. And this time when I go to define stock, I'm going to put in that same information, right? My lower corner is zero, zero. My part is an inch thick. My other corner is six and six. And then the top of the part is zero. So when I push return and go to make part, 
I'm going to once again make this big enough so you can see it well. Then go to verify part. And you'll notice as it starts using this offset, I'm going to slow it down when it switches tools. So right here, you'll see that it comes in and the green part it's doing there is it's picking out those corners and tight areas and then doing the full finish around all of the profiles, leaving the one on the right standing. So this is how it works with DXF. And the next thing I'm going to do is show you a little bit more about how to do it with a parasolid model. So here I'm going back to the program in and out mode and I've got this part in here that's a connecting rod. I'm going to select that. It's asking me, uh, do I want to overwrite? Yes, I do. I'm going to go back to program mode again and I'm going to flip over here. So this is my parasolid model, right? It works just like any other model when I'm doing such. And what it wants to know is where is the surface that's pointing up? So I'm going to select the top surface, say A. And then the next thing it's asking if I need to rotate the part, anything like that. I do not need to do that, so I'm going to push continue. Now it's asking me to define where zero is. And you'll notice from the way that the model was drawn that zero, zero for X and Y is already in the center of the part. So I'm going to leave that where it is. But I need to define where zero is on the actual top of the piece part. So I'm going to highlight that in the isometric form and push set Z zero. Okay, and then I'm going to push continue. So here's my model, but it's in the 2D form right now, okay? The next thing that I got to do here is inquire geometry again. And the reason I want to do that is I need to know what size this actual material is from the model they drew, and I don't know that. So if I just click on the top line here, you'll see that it tells me here that it's approximately 3.6 and 2.1. And if I go to the other side, it's exactly the same because my zero is in the middle. So that tells me what I need to know here. I'm going to push continue. I'm going to go to clear off. And in here it says, do you want to chain? Yes, I do. So I'm going to select that, start up here, go this direction. It chains everything together. This is in this case, my only profile. So I'm going to go to end profiles. And now for my outside, I do want to chain. I'm just going to go up here and click on the outside. There I got that part. I'm going to go to event. Okay, now before I fill in all the information for the event, I'm going to go back to my options page. And this time I'm going to add a couple other features, right? So I'm going to change my parallel path here to adaptive so I can do adaptive machining. And then I'm also going to turn on my Z finish cut. And if I look down here a little farther, you'll see that my toolpath pattern is set to parallel for my Z finish cut. I'm going to leave that the way it is so that you can see what actually happens. So in here, I'm going to get back into this part. My Z rapid is set to 50 thousandths, which is the top of my part. I could use my solid for this, but I don't really need it. But on here I do. So I'm going to go to view solid. I'm going to click on the floor here and say with no offset and let it fill in the depth, which happens to be a half an inch. All right. Number of passes, I'm going to use one. Finish cut still set to 10. I've got a 5 thousandths Z finish cut that I'm going to use. I've got uh, RPMs again, the same as I had before my entry feed rate, my machining feed rate, my finish feed rate. And I'm going to do all of this with tool number one because there's no place for a tool to get pinched in this case. So I've got that part done, okay? Next thing that I'm going to do is just hit the event key to get back out of here. I'm going to go over here to the tool table and I'm going to fill in some information on the tools, okay? So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to say, okay, I want to use this half inch tool as tool number one and then push tool table again, go to setup mode, and in here I'm gonna select the tool path. So with an adaptive tool path, it does take a few seconds longer because it's much more involved, but the time that it saves machining is well worth those few seconds that you have to invest. All right, so what I see now is I see the blue lines showing me how I'm gonna adaptively machine and remove all of that material. And then after I change tools, the green lines are showing me the parallel pattern to do the floor. What this is going to do is allow me to remove the material very quickly and then come back and get a nice floor finish on the bottom of it so the part cosmetically looks great. Okay, so I'm going to push return. I'm going to go back to verify. And if you remember when I defined the stock, whenever I'm defining stock, it's taking the information from the geometry and trying to figure out for itself how big your stock is. We know that it's actually minus 3.6 and minus 2.1, and it's a one inch part, and then 
2.1 for the other side, top of the part being zero, push return. So go to make part here, and I'm gonna blow it up like I have before so you can see it well. And now you'll notice when I go in here and I hit verify part that it starts from the outside using an adaptive pattern and comes in and removes the material. Okay, now I haven't changed any of the other defaults, so keep in mind that it's machining in a zigzag pattern because that's the way the default is set. I do have the ability to program where I only cut in one direction, so that's one of the benefits on the way our toolpaths work. I should also point out the fact that our toolpaths in our control rival most cam systems without ever even needing a computer, so that's a big deal for you guys. There's a couple other things that you need to know about the way that this thing works, so let me just turn this a little bit so you can see it. This is a one-time investment, this option, okay? It is something we charge for, but it doesn't come with any maintenance fees. You buy it once, you have it forever, okay? Keep in mind that when you wanna know a little bit more about this, the best thing to do is reach out to your track representative because he's the one who can help show it to you a little bit better, maybe program some of your parts. Also, he'll help you get set up so that you can get the right uh, codes and everything to get it turned on in your machine. You're gonna have to update your software and some things like that too. But when you're done, you're gonna have this capability. It's very powerful. I know you're gonna really like it. So until then, I'll see you in the next video. But as always, thanks for watching and keep on tracking.